Body Fellowship, and of course, the exact and truth landscape of Body Fellowship believers across that fruity plain that fellowship with us, irrespective of where your membership may lie. Good morning and welcome to another one of our Saturday Sabbath Exact and Truth Ministry Facebook Lives. Will you bow your head and pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day that your mighty hand is made. We thank you for life, health, and strength today. We thank you for food, shelter, and clothing. We thank you for protections and provisions with regards to our families, our loved ones, relatives, children, neighbors, friends, co-workers, associates, and even our enemies this morning. We're asking that you come into this service. We're asking that you have your way. Order our steps. Lead and we will follow. We're asking right now that you allow the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart to be acceptable in thy sight. O Most High, our strength and our Redeemer, and allow us to leave this fellowship uh, the better for coming, no longer the same. And we're asking right now that you remember the truly poor today, the sick and shut in, all those that have uh, solicited prayer. We're asking that you remember those in need of prayer. We intercede on their behalf, Heavenly Father. Even if we don't call names today, you know all about it. Have your way and move in those circumstances. Provide provisions according to your riches and glory, but most importantly, have your way. We're asking right now that uh, you abide among leadership in this world. It appears to be a great deficit in the world in so many regards is in turmoil, but we're asking, Heavenly Father, that you move and that you influence leadership, those that have power. Consider morality and consider your way and your will before it's ultimately too late. But irrespective of these things, we're asking that you allow us to be a city set upon a hill that cannot be hid in the light of the world and the salt of the earth. We're asking that you bless it. The Exact and Truth Ministries allow the exact and truth to spread so that people might know what your will is, uh, what your deeds were in actuality, and that we might do them. We're asking that you give us the indwelling of the Holy Spirit so that we might be guided with your mighty hand. And we're asking once again that you bless all those that uh, witness and bear witness of this record this morning, all those who are touched by this word and this ministry. And we're asking that you just continue to move by your power. We ask these blessings and many more in that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua, Hamashiach, the Christ name we pray, amen. Praise the Most High for prayer this morning. Effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much, and we're so grateful for the ability to be able to communicate with the Father. Good morning. Another blessed Saturday Sabbath to each and every one of you Sabbath keepers. We're grateful for those of you all who are joining us live, and we are grateful for whoever this word reaches, even those who are going to peruse this lesson, this sermon at a later date. But we're grateful for the faithful. And how are you all doing? Prayerfully, you're doing well. Try not to lose your mind. The CDC has given up. No, the CDC has <laughs> suspended uh, all quarantines and, and, and everything of the such. Mm -hmm. And we're praying right now. Yeah, they no mandates, no mask required. They, they just declared that, you know, this is something that we're going to be living with. But I know people personal, uh, personally and personally close to me that uh, are suffering as we speak, that are infirm not feeling well. We want everybody to pray for young sister India. Uh, she's not feeling well, but uh, the devil be defeated. We declare victory and strength uh, in her body in the name of the Christ. We pray And all of those of you all who may not be feeling well, lift up your head, square your shoulders for the most high uh, has redeemed you. And we believe in that redemption. We had an awesome time in our mm -hmm. Wednesday night question and answer Bible study, exacting insight into the word Wednesday. I know some of you all wish uh, that you had access to it online. Currently, it's not accessible online. It's in person. Hey, all of the quarantines have been dropped. Come on out. We still have plenty of space at the Swatera Church of God shared ministry that Exacting Truth Ministry shares with Swatera Church of God, Precious Pastor Mike in the congregation, as well as New Beginnings Ministry. So you don't have to worry about somebody breathing directly on you if you're still paranoid. Listen, we had a wonderful crowd. The crowd is growing. You're going to want to join us. We had an excellent time uh, with the Most High. So join us this coming Wednesday live in person. But we're grateful that you're here now. And you all know on Saturday Sabbath, we have a tradition. We hold up the Holy Writ. 
Why? Because it contains words of the Most High and words that were left on record for our learning. So symbolically, we lift it up because we look to the hills from coming from our help, our help coming from the Most High that have made heavens and the heavens and the earth, and we symbolically hold up the writ because we want to look up to it. And the words that were left on record for our learning, including the words of the Most High, not down to our own understanding. Amen. If you would please join us in the Hebrew book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 2 and 3 this morning. We're going to read it in your hearing out of the Holy Writ, and then we're going to read Romans 15 and 4. Habakkuk 2, we're going to take this morning from the New American Standard Bible English translation. If you can join us there, we'd be much obliged. Followed by, once again, Romans chapter 15. We're going to read a singular verse there, verse 4, and that's going to be taken from the New International Version. So here it is, the Holy Writ, beloved. It reads as thus. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision and inscribe it clearly on tablets so that one who reads it may run, my Lord, for the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hurries toward the goal, praise the Most High, and it will not fail. Though it delays, wait for it, for it will certainly come. It will not delay long. Amen. What a wonderful and a powerful word that the Most High spoke via his messenger, Habakkuk. And now, if you would please oblige us by joining us. In Romans chapter 15, we're going to read in your hearing Romans chapter 15, verse 4, taken from the NIV, and it reads as thus, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction. This is Kibbutz. So that, and I'm reading the New Standard Bible, forgive me, let me switch to the NIV. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Amen, beloved. May the Most High add a blessing and an enriching to the reading of the Holy Writ this morning. Beloved, for the brief time that we have to be before you this morning, the title of our text is simply titled, The Snare Lies in Silence. There are precious few things more powerful in this corporeal life that we live as knowledge. Very little or fewer things that are more impactful, more important, more critical to our survival and thriving than knowledge. Never believe the adage, what you do not know cannot hurt you. Nor believe the saying, ignorance is bliss. Neither one of them are true. A lack of knowledge, a lack of know-how, as it were. Well, beloved, it's crippling. Not being able to know or see your adversary in war or battle, for example, just places you in greater danger and seeds the advantage and possibility for victory overwhelmingly to one's enemy or opponent through the element of surprise. Very few things can literally suck the life out of relationships and dismantle the progress of fellowship between individuals like the harboring of vital secrets. Nations and societies, well, they either thrive or become literally extinct based upon the knowledge that they possess or do not possess. 
based upon information that they have or do not have and based upon their know-how. The lineage of families are cut off and do not survive that cut off and lack of literally keeping and practicing valuable legacy. And what is legacy, you may ask? Well, the noun legacy in the English lexicon is anything handed down from the past as from an ancestor or predecessor. And trust me, beloved, legacy can have a positive effect or legacy can have an ominous effect depending on what it is that you're passing down. If you doubt this morning the virility of Legacy, for example, if you're skeptical about it, if you're like, uh, legacy is not all that important. If you doubt the virility of legacy, one need to look no further than the passing down of immense generational wealth in the history of our world to understand the impact that legacy has. The wealth of American families such as the Carnegie's, for example, the Mellons, the Kennedy family, the family of J. Paul Getty, the Walton family of Walmart wealth and Sam's Club, and families such as even the Hilton family has extended across multiple generations, beloved. And the wealth of families in history, such as the Rothschilds, well, that has extended. Their wealth literally has traversed centuries. It has taken immense discipline, great honor, and complete respect of legacy in order to not jeopardize these huge collections of familial wealth. Yeah. Yeah. Their wealth have survived more than one knucklehead that's risen up in the ranks of the family, but they're, e they're, they're very quickly dealt with in order to preserve the entirety and the whole of the importance of that generational, generational wealth that is maintained among families such as the ones that we've named. And the acquisition and maintenance of knowledge has been the key for mankind from the very beginning. Once again, knowledge is imperative, knowledge is key. How is it that concentrated political power and control is maintained over such large expanses of time yet appears to change hands so sparingly? The same type of people and the same set of folks, parties and organizations, well, seem to always hold all of the power and possess a majority of the control over time. I know I'm not the only one. Some of you all may be asking, why is that, Shepherd Man? How is this possible? It's possible, beloved, through the harboring of vital knowledge and information and important know-how and then monopolizing this critical information through the closing of ranks, as it were, keeping the possession of such powerful legacy between a select, precious few that meet and qualify for their organization or collective's lofty prerequisites and near impossible standards. And then you know what happens after all of this is accomplished? They're sworn to secrecy. Secret societies and powerful yet elusive groups and organizations have existed literally from the beginning of time itself. And till this very day serve as kingmakers in our society and amidst the government and governments which govern us all. And they do it fundamentally, beloved, through the control of vital information and the harboring of valuable and critical resources. They maintain friendships and communication with one another and insulate themselves literally from anyone else operating outside of their factions. 
and it is ingrained in these people that the releasing of these secrets and the releasing or gain, or allowing access to legacy to anyone other than members of their collective will be rewarded with a fate worse than death. To be excommunicated from the ranks of these select groups. Well, it's a shame and embarrassment that you would think would be worse than eternal damnation itself. And this is basically how the power of their ranks are preserved through the possession of knowledge and harboring of power and the strict honoring of legacies and protocols maintained in the group. We live through the word, beloved. And in Genesis chapter two, verse 17, the most high creator of all things instructed Adam with regard to the power that lies in knowledge. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Lord have mercy. The unlocking of the knowledge and power of possessing the ability to choose and to think independently of our creator who made man. Well, it placed mankind on a path of death and self-destruction, which is why the Most High was attempting to keep us from unlocking that knowledge. But once it was unlocked, well, here we are in 2022. Legacy was the vehicle in which the Most High would ultimately employ our salvation from the sin and destruction that we brought upon ourselves through the acquisition of knowledge and the misuse of it. Abraham was picked by the Creator and his offspring were given the law, for example, to practice and a legacy being the law to hand down to serve as a multi-generational delivery mechanism of sorts, which ultimately would deliver to all of mankind redemption through the sacrifice of the Christ. Hallelujah. His laws were given to this single nation of individuals, beloved, and not shared and very rarely practiced even by any of the Gentiles, or in other words, the other nations of the world. And out of all of the Israelites, in the end, the tribe of Judah was the only family members among them and amidst the entire clan of Israelites to uphold the legacy long enough to usher in the age of salvation through the birth, death, and resurrection of the Hamashiach. And now the good news or gospel has been deeded to you and I to go into the entire world and share, lest they miss the benefit of the knowledge regarding the free gift of salvation available to everyone via its acceptance and then submission to the Most High God of the Hebrews. Paul the Apostle wrote in his second letter, to the body Ecclesia at Rome, chapter four, verse three. And this time we'll be referencing the New International Version of chapter four, verse three of Corinthians. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. My Lord, Knowledge is critical, beloved. Verses three and four of the King James Version states, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Make no bones about it, beloved. Make no mistake this morning. How Satan, meaning the Satan, has masterminded a powerful conspiracy to, to destroy and eradicate entire nations and cultures of people. And similar to some potassium compounds that are not 
traceable or detectable after death that oftentimes assassins and people with nefarious intent poison individuals with and escape scot-free because of its lack of detectability after death. Satan's thumbprint is not visible on the destruction of these particular groups in question. They really only have their own deeds in the end and lack of action to blame. Why is that? It's because they fail to value or possess critical knowledge and they certainly fail to possess, nor do they honor or pass down valuable legacy. Lord have mercy. Stay with us. We're going somewhere with this in our closing. True legacy, true legacy, beloved, has little to do with what you might think. We hear words like legacy and we start thinking about uh, lofty goals or we imagine aristocracy or fiefdoms as it were. But true legacy has little to do with pride and arrogance and everything to do with survival and with thriving. The oppression and enslaving of people from the dawn of civilization has had very little to do with the threat of violence keeping the oppressed under control. You know why? Because revolt is often the child and offspring of fatigue. Folks get tired relatively quickly of being downtrodden, threatened, and abused. And then thus they rise up or revolt. A more permanent and effective tool of oppression dispersed and released over time in historical record has always been the withholding of knowledge, information, and education coupled with the cutoff of an of a group or several individuals that are being oppressed, ability to communicate among and amidst one another and with the rest of society, so to speak. In essence, keeping them ignorant is the greatest mechanism for keeping them under control or underfoot. The thing that gives special forces in the military, such a tactical advantage in war, for example, is their stealthy and superior ability to communicate. If they're going up against people who are inferiorly armed, who have lesser resources and ability to communicate, when they come in with that technology, with those drones, with their ability to have overwatch and satellites, it gives them an immense tactical advantage against those who are they're waging battle against. And that's why they're able to do more with fewer individuals. They're able to accomplish more on the battlefield utilizing fewer personnel. Nat Turner's famous rebellion during this country's dark time of slavery, of black folk, for example, was made possible by Brother Turner's gifted intelligence, his ability to acquire and learn how to read, and then his opportunity masquerading as a minister. That ability warranted him the ability to teach, reach, and communicate to other oppressed individuals at that time, allowing them to plan, allowing them to gather, to lay out schematics, and then to execute a revolt. When we look out today and see the ignorance the unspeakable violence, a society and community rife with promiscuity. When we look at the perpetual and systemic poverty amidst many groups, the poor health and limited access to health care. When we examine the poor diets and many other things that could be named, all being strangely enough, but yet proudly promoted in many regards, particularly among our youth, you see the direct results of Satan's plan, beloved, unfold. What plan is that, Shepherd Man? It's funny that you ask. A plan to destroy, for example, the nuclear family structure, an arbiter of legacy since time immemorial. 
a plan to separate fathers and mothers, for example, and separate them so that their children can be bastardized and grow up disadvantaged. A plan that laughs and mocks reading and education and the acquisition of knowledge. A plan that promotes financial illiteracy rather than financial literacy and puts those individuals that are illiterate of financial knowledge and capability at a marked disadvantage to others in society. A plan that promotes wasteful spending and self-indulgent excess. Why would you be in government subsidized housing and have even a need for a 20 to 30 to $50,000 Birkin bag? What sense does that make? You can't live in the purse. But yet we see the promotion of wasteful spending and indulgent excess, irrespective of where, you're, where you are in, your, in the economic media. A plan that glorifies violence. A plan that glorifies and encourages petty retribution. A plan that promotes gluttony and unhealthy upkeep of one's temple. I remind you, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. A plan that is void of a bright future because the folks whose future has been stolen hasn't necessarily been stolen in the end, by an outside oppressor. Rather, it's been stolen by their own abandonment of principle and their lack of passing down valuable legacy. Once again, in the Hebrew book of the prophet Hosea, chapter four, verse six, the Most High speaks through his messenger saying, my people, listen, since you think it's somebody else's fault for the predicament that your folks are in, Largely, I'm not saying that it's not a contributing factor, but listen to the word. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shall be no priest to me, seeing thou has forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Mm. See, that's key to the lesson this morning. Once again, at the end of that verse, verse six, he said, Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, the most high God of the Hebrews, I will forget thy children. And with the children, or in other words, the next generation being forgotten or purposely left out and punished, there goes with it valuable legacy. Listen, beloved. I'm going to say these things and then I'm going to prepare to pray and close this morning. With age and the passage of time, Lord knows comes tiredness, fatigue, and often frustration. Sometimes if it wasn't for your all's prayers and the grace of the Most High, my fear of the Heavenly Father, which is the beginning of wisdom, Scripture says, I wouldn't have an a ounce of energy left to minister because oftentimes it feels like and it seems as though nobody is listening and it's not reaching the audience that it's designed to reach. Beloved, with age and the passage of time comes frustration, tiredness, fatigue. You just want to go somewhere and sit down. Hey, they'll figure it out. <laughs> Beloved, we all may have grown sick of teaching. Some of us may have grown tired of being a constant example ourselves when it seems that nobody is willing or interested in following that example. You get up. And you try not to leave the house, for example, with your hair looking any kind of way. You try to treat people the way you'd like to be treated. You try to employ the golden rule. And when you look around, it don't seem like it matters to anyone. People are still stepping on you, still attempting to disrespect and still just going about their own business with little to no regard for the standards that we're attempting to upkeep. But if we give up trying to teach and attempting to share valuable legacies, traditions, and knowledge, these young folks in particular have zero hope of survival. And I think 
All you need to do is to log on or really to tell the truth, look outside of your window and see what we're talking about and you see that we're not lying. Because all that we see that is negative is a direct result of a lack of passing down legacy, a lack of knowledge, and people who have been abandoned and have not been taught. Is there any question that it seems like two or three generations ago? We all have sinned and come short. None of us are, perf are perfect or start out that way. We are to go towards the completion process. That's what perfection means. In, etymolo in etymology, in etymologically speaking. But beloved man, it just seems at a certain point, prior generations gave up and now the children are raising themselves. No one, no one can know and abide by what they haven't learned or been taught. It often appears as if very few people, if anyone is listening or even interested in the keys of hope, salvation and achievable success. But do not give up on legacy, beloved, because it is certain that the snare today lies in our silence. If we keep silent, if we keep to ourselves, if we say, forget about them, I'm only worried about me because they're not listening anyhow, we're falling into the plot and the plan and the snare that Satan has laid in wait for us all. Once again, I will say no one can know and abide by what they have not been taught and what they haven't learned. We all have the propensity to be destroyed by our lack of knowledge. So I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to encourage you with this this morning, beloved. Continue to live. Oh, because it's important to live it. Continue then thus to speak. And please continue, no matter how discouraging it seems at times, to teach the truth. The snare is in our silence. Open your mouth and let the Most High fill it. Our collective futures depend on it. Amen. Amen. Will you bow your heads and pray with me as we close? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wisdom that you have allowed us to pour out on your people because you have richly poured it into us this morning. Forgive us for our silence. Strengthen us in our frustration. Truly, the world appears to be in dismal hands, but that's why you have called us to be a light in this dark world. That's why you have commissioned us to be a city set up on a hill that cannot be hidden. Forgive us and we repent of our fatigue and we will not be remiss this morning, beloved, to share and to state and to proclaim that we know that this forgiveness and said forgiveness is nigh us because of that wonderful sacrifice of your son, the Hamashiach, the Christ that died on the cross but didn't stay dead, rose again. We're currently sitting on your right hand, Heavenly Father, making intercession for those that believe of which this message today was a powerful example of said intercession. And we pray that according to Romans chapter nine, chapter 10, verse nine, rather, the words of Paul, the apostle to the body I can say at Rome was that you save us. The original Greek term is sozo, which means that you rescue and then thus preserve us until such a time that you return for us, that we might live with you in infinite time forevermore. We ask these rich blessings. According to your grace, we ask them in the name of Yeshua, Yehoshua HaMashiach, the Christ's name we pray. Listen, once again, join us this Wednesday. You don't want to miss it. Bring your questions. Uh, and uh, I'm telling you, bring your desire for fellowship. The, move, the, the Most High is moving on our behalf. And uh, then followed by another powerful, exacting insight into the word. Well, no, a powerful Saturday Sabbath following that. We love you. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. Keep us in prayer. We're praying for you. And beloved, keep your heads up. We are in dark times, but we have been called to be the light. Shabbat Shalom. Blessed Saturday, Saturday.